Welcome to Piping Up, presented by the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square. I'm your host, Luke Howard. These organ concerts are streamed live every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at noon Mountain Time. And previous episodes of Piping Up are also available for on-demand viewing on the Tabernacle Choir's Facebook page and YouTube channel. And you can find out more information about this concert series, including downloadable program listings for this week's episodes at tabchoir.org slash piping up. Our organist today is Richard Elliott, playing the Schoenstein organ in the conference center on Temple Square. He'll start the concert with an organ transcription of Psalm 19 by the Italian composer Benedetto Marcello. This work was originally composed for choir and small orchestra and was actually a setting of an Italian language paraphrase of Psalm 19. And this organ transcription was written by the French organist Théodore Dubois. In the music we just heard, Marcello actually included some of the traditional Jewish intonations of the psalm as a link to the ancient practices of cantillation. Next, we'll hear the fugue in C major from BWV 564 by J.S. Bach. And this is the final section of the toccata, adagio, and fugue. And in fact, we heard the opening toccata here on Piping Up just recently. Even though this was composed as an organ work, Bach was influenced by the forms and practices of the Baroque concerto when he wrote it. Most obviously in the three sections that fall into a fast, slow, fast pattern. And the 16th note figures in this concluding fugue are also derived from Baroque violin technique. And you should remember that Bach was also a talented violinist himself. This is one of those cases where the compositional practices of ensemble music transfer beautifully from orchestra to a work written for the keyboard. After the fugue in C major, we'll hear the Dance of the Blessed Spirits from Gluck's opera Orfeo.
That was Richard Elliott's own transcription of The Dance of the Blessed Spirits from the opera Orfeo by Christoph Willibald Gluck. It was intended to represent the peace, purity and bliss of the Elysian fields where Orpheus waited for the return of his beloved Eurydice. In the orchestral version, the flute is the pastoral instrument of choice to symbolize that peace. Here Richard used one of the more unusual orchestral stops on this Schoenstein organ, the symphonic flute stop in the solo division. We'll hear now a work by Robert Kundig, I Am Jesus' Little Lamb, that features another uncommon element on this organ, the digital Zimbelstern. If it were analog instead of digital, there would be a rotating star with bells mounted on it that chime as the star turns. It's a lovely effect and brightens Kundik's charming arrangement of a late 18th century Moravian hymn tune. It's been a long-standing tradition at these organ concerts for the organist to play their own arrangements of the hymn Come, Come Ye Saints and an old melody. After Richard plays his arrangement of that much-loved pioneer hymn, he'll perform his arrangement of the African-American spiritual Deep River. This moving song was first published in 1917 in an arrangement by Harry Burley, who had learned spirituals and plantation songs from his grandfather, an escaped slave. Burley himself described these old spirituals, like Deep River, as prayers that proclaim a religious security as old as creation, older than hope, deeper than grief, more tender than tears.
The hymn tune known as Kelvin Grove is adapted from an old Scottish ballad, first recorded in 1819. It was arranged fairly recently by the Scottish pastor and musician John Bell to accompany a hymn text he wrote himself. The hymn is called Will You Come and Follow Me, sometimes also known as The Summons, and it was published in 1987. As a university-trained musician and pastor, Bell is acutely aware of the tension in the musical liturgy between the long-standing traditions of hymnody and the real present-day temporal needs of modern worshippers. But he understands that focusing on one at the expense of the other only dilutes the power of the liturgy to inspire faith. So in the hymns he writes himself, Bell tries to blend old and new in ways that edify rather than polarize. Bell has worked with poor and marginalized communities throughout the United Kingdom and learned an important lesson from the humble people he felt called to serve. He later reflected, I discovered that seldom did our hymns represent the plight of the poor people to God. There was nothing that dealt with unemployment, nothing that dealt with living in a multicultural society and feeling disenfranchised. There was nothing about child abuse. There was nothing that reflected concern for the developing world. Nothing that helped us see ourselves as brothers and sisters to those who are suffering from poverty or persecution. Sometimes Bell's inspiration for a lyric or a melody comes directly from the insights gleaned as he serves those who are not just poor in spirit, but temporarily poor as well. And that's why his beautiful hymn, Will You Come and Follow Me, while using an old melody, addresses directly the very current responsibilities of a follower of Christ to reach out to the suffering, the lost, and the marginalized, to make a difference not just in their spiritual lives, but their physical circumstances as well. That, after all, is pure religion. Richard Elliott will close today's program with his own composition based on this old Scottish tune, his Toccata on Kelvin Grove. Thank you for watching this episode of Piping Up with organist Richard Elliott. 
you're always welcome to return for the live stream of these concerts every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. And previous episodes of Piping Up are also available for on-demand viewing. Piping Up, organ concerts at Temple Square, streams on the Tabernacle Choir's website, Facebook page and YouTube channel, and at broadcasts.churchofjesuschrist.org.